the struggle for Palestinian liberation has claimed the lives of numerous key Hamas figures. However, the mission continues, led by those who remain. In this segment, we delve into who these remaining leaders are and the roles they play in the ongoing conflict. In recent weeks, the name Yahya Sinwar has echoed loudly across headlines, especially after Israeli Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi announced an intensified pursuit to eliminate him. Sinwar, recognized as the new political leader of Hamas, has risen to prominence following his orchestration of the Hamas attacks on Israel on October 7, 2023. Hamas, currently engaged in fierce battles with Israeli forces in Gaza, recently declared Yahya Sinwar as their supreme leader. This appointment followed the death of his predecessor, Ismail Haniyeh, who was killed in an airstrike in Iran. Born in 1962 in the southern region of Gaza, Yahya Ibrahim al-Sinwar, more commonly known as Yahya Sinwar, has been a central figure in the Palestinian resistance. He is the founder of Hamas's internal security apparatus, known as Majd. This group is responsible for managing security within Gaza, including investigating suspected Israeli agents and tracking intelligence operatives. Like many Palestinian fighters, Sinwar has faced multiple imprisonments by Israel. His first arrest came in 1982, with subsequent detentions over the years. In 1988, after briefly regaining his freedom, Sinwar was captured once more by Israeli forces. This third arrest led to a sentence of four life terms. While he was imprisoned, his supporters continually pressured the Israeli government for his release. Their efforts paid off when Sinwar was freed as part of a prisoner exchange deal known to Palestinians as the Loyalty of the Free. This 2011 exchange saw the release of numerous prisoners from both Fatah and Hamas, with Sinwar among them. Following his release, Yahya Sinwar quickly resumed his role as a leading figure within Hamas. His influence and prominence were such that, in September 2015, the United States placed him on its blacklist, designating him as a significant threat due to his involvement in militant activities. As the conflict continues, Yahya Sinwar stands as one of the most prominent figures in the fight for Palestinian liberation, symbolizing both the resilience and the ongoing resistance of Hamas. Yahya Sinwar is not alone in his leadership. Alongside him stands a cadre of Hamas intellectuals who are equally pivotal in their ongoing struggle against Israel. Among these figures is Abu Ubaida, a prominent militant who serves as the spokesperson for the Iz Adin al Qassam brigades, the military wing of Hamas. Abu Ubaida is a pseudonym, and to this day, the true identity of the man behind the characteristic kafia remains unknown. The name Abu Ubaida pays homage to Abu Ubaida Ibn al Jara, a revered companion of the Prophet Muhammad in Islam and a commander of the Rashidun Caliphate's forces during the Battle of Yarmouk and the Siege of Jerusalem in the 7th century. Born on February 11, 1985, in Gaza, Abu Ubaida's real name and most of his personal details remain shrouded in secrecy. His face is perpetually concealed, ensuring that his true appearance is a mystery to both allies and enemies alike. Despite this enigmatic presence, Abu Ubaidah has made several public appearances over the years. His first significant emergence was in 2006 when he delivered a statement regarding the capture of Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit. Each of Abu Ubaidah's declarations is infused with a fiery resolve and an unwavering commitment to the Palestinian cause. His statements directed at Israel are marked by boldness and an absence of fear. Most recently, in late 2023, amid the intense conflict between Israel and Hamas, Abu Ubaidah made a series of statements. He proudly claimed that Palestinian fighters had successfully repelled enemy assaults, 
لا يؤكد من جديد حجم الخسارة والفشل والتخبط الذي مني به العدو في هذه Neutralizing key strongholds, he went on to assert that they had destroyed Israeli tanks and military vehicles within just two days. Moreover, he made it clear that neither he nor the Palestinian fighters would cease their attacks on Israel, remaining steadfast in their resolve. In the aftermath of Ismail Haniyeh's death, the Al Qassam brigades, through Abu Ubaida, issued stern warnings to Israel highlighting the potential regional consequences following Haniyeh's demise at the hands of Israeli forces. Through his rhetoric and actions, Abu Ubaidah embodies the persistent and relentless nature of Hamas military efforts, continuing to lead with a voice that resonates across the conflict's front lines. While names like Abu Ubaidah and Yahya Sinwar frequently make headlines. They are far from the only key figures within Hamas, a group often viewed as one of Iran's most powerful proxies. Another pivotal player in this complex network is Abdullah Barghouti, a name that carries a dark and formidable legacy. Born in Kuwait in 1972, Abdullah Barghouti's journey to becoming one of Hamas's most feared operatives was shaped by his early experiences and education. After the Second Gulf War in 1990, Barghouti relocated to Jordan. His pursuit of knowledge later took him to South Korea, where he studied electronic engineering for three years. This education laid the foundation for his expertise in creating explosives, a skill that would later define his role within Hamas. However, Barghouti never completed his studies. His talent for crafting deadly devices remained hidden until he demonstrated his abilities to his cousin, Bilal al-Barghouti. Recognizing his potential, Bilal introduced Abdullah to his commanders, and soon after, Barghouti was recruited into the Iz ad-Din al-Qassam brigades, the military wing of Hamas. His primary role was to produce explosives as well as toxic substances derived from ordinary items like potatoes, and to design detonators. In 2003, Abdullah Barghouti's activities caught up with him when he was captured by Israeli special forces. His arrest marked the end of a deadly chapter in which he was held responsible for the deaths of dozens of Israeli citizens. Following his capture, Barghouti endured three months of intense interrogation Ultimately, he received one of the harshest sentences ever handed down. 67 life terms, totaling 5,200 years in prison. Bargaudi's time in prison was marked by extreme isolation, initially being held in solitary confinement. However, his determination and resilience shone through when he staged a hunger strike, which eventually led to his removal from solitary. Known for his intellect, Barghouti earned the nickname the Shadow Prince during his imprisonment. Even behind bars, Barghouti's influence did not wane. He authored a book in prison, detailing his life and the operations he had carried out with other detainees. In his writings, he revealed how he managed to obtain explosive materials despite being incarcerated, and described how he orchestrated bombings from a distance. Abdullah Barghouti remains a symbol of the deadly ingenuity that Hamas has utilized in its ongoing conflict with Israel, a reminder of the persistent threat that figures like him pose even from within the confines of prison walls. Another significant figure in the leadership of Hamas is Mahmoud Zahar. Born in Gaza City in 1945, Zahar's heritage is a blend of Palestinian roots from his father and Egyptian citizenship from his mother. His early years were spent in Ismailia, Egypt, but he later pursued his education in Gaza. Mahmoud Zahar's academic brilliance led him to earn a degree in general medicine from Ain Shams University in Cairo in 1971, followed by a master's degree in general surgery in 1976. Upon completing his education, Zahar returned to Gaza, where he worked as a doctor in hospitals across Gaza and Khan Yunis. However, 
his political stance soon put him at odds with Israeli authorities, leading to his dismissal from his medical position. Zahar was recognized as a prominent leader within Hamas, being actively involved in the group's leadership from its early days. His influence was so significant that just six months after Hamas was founded, Israel detained him for six months in 1988. Zahar was also one of the leaders deported to Marj al Zuhur by Israel in 1992. When Hamas secured a majority in the 2005 legislative elections, Mahmoud Zahar assumed the role of Minister of Foreign Affairs in the government formed by Prime Minister Ismail Haniyeh. However, this government was later dissolved by President Mahmoud Abbas amid the internal conflict that led to the split within the Palestinian territories. Israel attempted to assassinate Mahmoud Zahar in 2003 by dropping a half-ton bomb from an F-16 jet on his home in the Rimal neighborhood of Gaza City. While Zahar escaped with minor injuries, his eldest son was killed in the attack. Tragedy struck again in 2008 when Israel launched an assault on eastern Gaza, resulting in the death of Zahar's second son, who was a member of the Iz Adin al Qassam brigades. In addition to his political and militant activities, Mahmoud Zahar has contributed significantly to intellectual and literary fields. He has authored several books, including The Problem of Our Contemporary Society, A Quranic Study, No Place Under the Sun, a response to a book by Benjamin Netanyahu, and a novel titled On the Sidewalk. Despite the losses and challenges, Mahmoud Zahar and the remaining Hamas leadership continue their struggle, firmly believing in their mission to liberate Palestine from Israeli control. His enduring presence in the leadership underscores the resilience and persistence of Hamas in the face of ongoing conflict.